grown folks reminisce with some feel-good music as we have grown conversations. Join us on our journey as we apply knowledge to power, for together we are better. Every Wednesday from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Grown Folks Radio, everyday talk with Carmen and Kevin. One, two, one, two. And it's Grown Folks time. Welcome, Grown Folks, as always. Thank you for joining us on this journey. And to all the new listeners, welcome to the Grown Folks Grown folks family. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this, is, this is Everyday Talk with your girl Carmen and your boy Kevin. What's up, fam? Wow. I'm, you, you okay? That's what happens when I'm, you know, I turn to the side and I look at you and you guys are just, you know, family, this is not easy. I, I just want to say that it's not easy. Wow. Hey, fam. Welcome to the show. <laughs> and just for the record, guys, today is National Chocolate Mint Day. But he didn't bring any. No, I did not. I Sorry. actually like chocolate mint. Yes. All right. Like mint I said, chocolate, chocolate <laughs> mint. Like I said before the show, guys. Like a peppermint I'm patty need, I'm type need, of deal. Listen, I'm gonna need you guys to work on your communication. I had no idea. Oh, uh, but we're what? not the ones who were communicating that, though. I'm, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm out. All right. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> hey family, as, as always, if you have not yet followed and liked us, make sure to do so. We're on all social media. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube, or visit us on gfrworldwide.com. This is Grown Folks Radio Worldwide. Hey, family, while you're out on the chatter box, I want to say hello to our family members who are joining us, Nichelle, Stephanie, Suzette, Miss Suzette, my sister. Oh, wow. Welcome to the show, Miss Suzette. Welcome, Steph. <laughs> hey, family, if you're out there listening to us, uh, make sure to join in and let us know that you're on. We are getting ready for this powerful part two of Time to Heal. Are you guys ready? Yeah, I'm yes. ready. I'm ready. Uh, you know, like I said at the beginning of the live, if, the, if last week's show was any indication of of the direction that this series is going to go i'm ready and it's going to be epic and i want as many family members as we can um whether you're seasoned you've been with us since the beginning or if you're new right we all have some healing to do Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so let's buckle up let's jump in yeah i think that's really important and always uh to remember family this is about transparency this is where we're at. We're bringing the conversation to the table. Is a no judgment, judgment free, free judgment free zone. Yeah, I, I see you have Nat's energy, and I like that. No, I don't have. Like, you know, I'm kind of like it's. I'm I'm in a mix of emotions. I don't know. I'm cold. I'm hot. I'm like I'm trying to figure myself out at the very moment while I'm on she air. Is on fire. <laughs> Armin could have used a York peppermint patty. Yes. Oh. Oh. I could have used the peppermint patty. To, that would have just cool like, her down because she's on fire. Wow! Wow! Just, <laughs> <laughs> well, I almost <laughs> choked earlier on my own words, so I don't know how on fire I am right now. Hey, family, you know how we always do before we get into our deep conversation. We get into some celebration. Woo! All right, guys. You know our indie artist of the month was actually our official. Uh, first indie artist that we've ever had here at Grown Folks Radio Worldwide. Um, so, family, let me introduce you to Kenny Tomlin. I want to be ready right here. Everyday talk with Carmen and Kevin on Grown Folks Radio. Woo! Hi. Come on, y'all, listen. Let's have some fun with the truth. So much been going on on this planet called Earth. I'm gonna let and spit it out for all that is worth. Satan's been busy since the beginning of time, doing everything that he can to destroy your mind. Or you, or you, don't let him in. That's not good or no. I can promise you he'll never be your friend. No, that's just not him. He's an evil, wicked old. I can't speak for you, but I can speak for me. I'm going to be ready when he comes back for us. I'll be ready when he busts through that sky. I'm going to be ready. Ready when I see that big smile. When he looks at me and say, well done, my child. So much has been going on in these brand new evil days. 
It's time for all of us to start changing our way. Just open our eyes and realize that Satan's fooling us with all these material things. In the house on the hill that costs about two or three mil, a lot of jewelry and hundred dollar bills. If you, if you let him take control, let him take control. We're breaking the mold, bringing back the love and care at Grown Folks Radio, every day talk with Carmen and Kevin. All right, fam, that was I Want to Be Ready by our indie artist of the month, Mr. Kenny Tomlin. Kenny Tomlin. Kenny. Make sure That's... to go out there and find him. He's on Facebook under Kenny Tomlin, music artist, and you can find his music pretty much streaming in all areas. So go out there and listen to his music. It's great I, stuff. I can't wait for to meet Kenny because he's in California, fam. And, um, you know, he, he's always talking about coming over here to the FLA. So uh, we look forward to that, brother. We look forward to that. We sure do. Hey, family, uh, thank you for joining us. As you know, this is Grown Folks Radio Worldwide. We want to take a moment to the family who's out on the chatterbox and say hello to you. Uh, Miss Suset Felipe J., who I call J., is my son. <laughs> and he said, hi, Mom, taking a homework break to wish you the best. Thank you, baby. And um, to our family and Suzanne, who, you know, hey, I'm, I'm wearing our shirt, Fiercely Resilient. Yes, yes. resilient. That, that is what we are. And Gayla James, as Kevin mentioned, and Alex as well. We thank you, family, for listening to us, for being here with us, and for sharing this moment. And as we are asking, we're getting ready to get into the discussion of the day of part two, Time to Heal. Of course, we want to take a moment and get into this beautiful new segment that Kevin has been doing, as he calls giving, you know, tips to the fellas. Yeah. Hey, I've taken notes, ladies. Listen, be able to listen to it, be able to take on some notes as well, because we are supportive. We are that back, that backbone in that area that we can help our spouses our boyfriends our sons our our nephews it doesn't matter necessarily have to be in an intimate relationship but these are key points that we can also share with them so family here is kevin's manly manners hashtag go tampa yeah Um, Hey, welcome, fam. Welcome to my segment of the show, uh, Kevin's Manly Manners, where I simply talk to the men in the family, um, and we we break things down and uh, discuss things to 
to make you a better man, right? So, uh, you know, first and foremost, fam, I want to give a shout out to my men's group at, at church, Orlando World Outreach Center, and to our uh, my group uh, team leader, uh, Purnell, because last night at last night's meeting, he dropped another gem on me. Okay, and I, it was only necessary. I felt like it was only uh, necessary to bring it to to the men right on on the show. So women, I invite you, ladies, I invite you to if your man is not home, if the man in your life is not home, please direct him to this at a later time. Right. Um, fam, I'm going to ask you to if you have a pen and paper, write these down. OK, because what we're going to talk about tonight, fam, we're going to talk about seasons, fellas. We're going to talk about seasons. There are four seasons in a, in a man's life Four, and every man that's listening to this show is in one of these four categories. Okay. okay. One of these four seasons. So we're just, what we're going to do is we're just going to, I'm going to give you, it's going to be broken down by age. Okay. And then there's uh, you know some questions that you could be asking yourself if you're in this age group uh, to help you kind of fine tune or, or get your calibrate, I guess is a good word recalibrate yourself uh to get prepared to you know move on to the next uh season all right so all right the first one the first of the four seasons we're going to break down is from ages zero to 20 years of age okay Okay. fam that season is is for you're you're finding out who you are who am i okay um you know in this you're 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 really just so many of us you know we use this we reflect back in those days because we were kind of reckless doing whatever (laughs) doing whatever we could get away with okay but ultimately what what in a in authentic manhood is the term that we use um this is a time this is a very important time because it's a time of of finding your identity okay finding who you are all right the second age group fam is the age group from 21 to 40 okay this is the learning and growing season, guys. This is the learning and growing season. This is the this is the step up from the adolescence into learning what you're going to be doing, what kind of tools you need to fine tune, um, education. You, you're kind of transferring, transforming from the adolescence into manhood. Very nice. Okay. Mm-hmm. So uh, you know, in this age group, you're 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 starting a family. You know, you're you're looking into possibly buying a house or, you know, just growing up, you know. And as one of the uh, my my brothers in the group said last night, is this really happening? Yes, it's really happening. You know, things (laughs) in life, you know, it's the funny games. The club scene is is kind of coming to an end. You know, you're 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 finding yourself. Okay. Yep. Um, For the age group of 40 to 60, which is. Looking at your boy truly here. Yeah, you with me? Okay. Uh, <laughs> this is the, the season of influence, guys. Okay? This Very is the nice. season of influence. At this age, at this stated stage of the game, we're, we're no longer adolescent. We're no longer, um, we, we're always learning and we're always growing. But we're at a point in life right now where we are, our responsibility is to start to call the younger men up to be a, a influence to show them what it's like to be an authentic man. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? What are the important things you need to be um, looking at, you know, learning, helping them learn from our mistakes to help them not do those things, right. you know, and this is a perfect situation for myself because my son just turned 21. I love Ooh. you. Happy birthday, Jay. Happy birthday. Um, but it's, 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 it's perfect because I get to spill my knowledge into him to help him avoid the same speed bumps that I did. You yep. know what I'm saying? So, fam, if you're in that season of your life, know that you're an influence. Your primary responsibility, fam, is influence. Okay? And we, we've talked about this uh, a couple of shows back. You never know who's watching who's you. Watching. Yep. You never know who's watching you. Just because your son is out of the house, there is another young man, another young boy that is watching you and how you behave, if, mm-hmm. especially if they don't have a role model, right? But but because you are a man and you happen to be in that particular area at that time, he's watching you and how you how you move. Be mindful of that, okay? 
And the last one, guys, um, is age 60 and up. That is the stage of life where you have all the wisdom in the world. You know, you've been through it all. Um, your, your flexibility is, is great. Um, which is the, the big plus here because a lot of us at that age, we're very close to retiring if we haven't retired already. So you have the time on your hands to invest in the, the, the next generation. You have the time to volunteer. You have the time to sit down and talk to the men, um, the young guys and, and help them also learn a level of influence as well. Okay. So I want the, the, the ladies, <clears throat> if you're listening, if the men are listening, write these down from age zero to 20. This is identity. This is who am I? All right. Finding yourself ages 21 to 40. Okay. Is learning and developing, learning and growing. Okay. From 40 to 60, this is influence. All right. Influence. This is you making an impact on some other man's life. Okay. And age 60 and up is wisdom. Okay. Which is also a level of uh, influence. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys, that will conclude the manly manners. It's good. Very good. Like very that. good. I like that. You know, the whole age group definition. Yeah. Definitely defines well, it, it a little it, it makes it It makes it a little bit easier. It makes it a little bit easier, especially for us young men um, when you're trying to find your way. You know, I know I didn't have a roadmap. You know, I'm, I, I'm 46 years old. I didn't have this going on when I was 20. You know, I didn't know what it was. I was the, one of those guys that was out there doing that foolishness. You know what I mean? And um, but when you're given a roadmap of or, or somebody to settle you down for a moment to say this is this is the importance of this season of life. This is the importance of you finding who you are, right. what you are going to do and what you're not going to do. Right. You know what I mean? So, you know, if, if this is just a roadmap, fam, um, you know, and use it to the best if it applies. Right. And it, the idea is to be able to provide that seed. Right. And and help one another to be able to um, grow right. and empower one another and, and give some knowledge so they're able to apply it. At least they know, you know, they have that opportunity. If you know, you do better, right? Right. right. If you know, you do better. Um, but at least they have the opportunity that somebody has been able to go out there and just share that with them out of love. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I think in life, there's like a lot of like trial and errors, tribulations, right. and you learn through the experiences when you fall and either get back up, what works for you, what doesn't. I think the most beautiful part, especially what you, what you put together, Kevin, is that we all have people who look up to us in mm -hmm. some way or another. So the fact that, you know, we know where we are and how we got there, we can save them a lot of trouble. That's, and I yep. try to do that with my brother. You know, you know, it's it's so hard for us as men to to have uh, to be a mentor. Right. Because we're, we're not focused in all honesty. You know, um, and, and, and it's not necessarily a bad thing, fellas. So, you know, a lot of our, our parents and our grandparents, they were driven. They were providers. They were out there working. Right. Because that was the blueprint that they were given to to provide for their home. Right. And then the wife is at the house tending to the children. Right. But what we've come to learn as us as men growing up now that is it, there was a disconnect. There was a disconnect because when the guys did come home, when our fathers did come home, there wasn't a level of connection there because they weren't there and they don't know how because they weren't shown how. Right. So in order yeah. for our children to to be um, dynamic in their relationships coming forward, a true man is is empowered. You know, he's a warrior. He's he's a he's a king, but he's also uh, he's a lover. He's a friend. The, the transparent part. And it takes older men that recognize that later in life. Unfortunately, <laughs> we took the speed bump so you don't have to. Right. right? So we're going to we're going to start dropping those gems on you early so you can you can start getting everything lined up at, a, at an early age. Very nice. Oh, Very my nice. son is listening. Uh, hey, send hey. them, send them, send them the file. <laughs> hey, fam! Before before we jump into uh, you know our our segment for the show, um, February is uh, Black History Month, fam, and we you know we wanted to 
um, celebrate that as always uh, on this month fam um, for on February this day. on this day I'm sorry February 19th yeah okay mm-hmm. uh, on this day and she's getting me correct because yes. uh, on 1940 this is really important legendary singer <laughs> Smokey Robinson was born on this Yay! day Ooh. Yeah, yeah, and that's Carmen's a humongous fan. That's why she was on the check mode right yes. there. Okay. Uh, on this day in 1942, the Tuskegee Airmen was initiated. That was a all black airman crew that that's was initiated. Sweet. Yeah, there's a there's actually a movie out, I mean, which is a great movie. I love that show. All right, and um, let's see. On this day, 1992, the late John Singleton became the first black nominated. Uh, for the Academy Award for Best Director and Screenplay for the Boys, Boys in, the in the Hood. hood. Boys <laughs> in the <laughs> Hood. You know what I'm saying? Ricky! Oh, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I, I, I'm sorry, guys. Flashback there? Flashback. <laughs> well, you know we'll, we'll come back. We'll come back. <laughs> and finally, guys, on this day, 2002, Vanetta Flowers became the first black gold medalist in the Junior Olympics for the two-person bobsled event. Very I remember nice. that. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. You know, I... I like the bobsled. I do, I'm not about that pushing, though. Because you got to push, 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 and then jump in. I'm not about that life. Oh. I'd probably fall out if I jumped. Tried to you jump would, Dan. In. Dan, you, you will fall out. And that's... I would laugh. I would be the person on the sideline laughing. I'd be laughing, too. <laughs> like, well, there goes the medal. Wow. wow. Shouldn't have liked to be. <laughs> He's a Patriot fan. You expect nothing. Whoa, 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 oh. whoa, whoa. I was going to say whoa. something cool. Now I'm, I'm going off mic. Oh, <laughs> man. All right, Always. family, let's bring it back. I want to take an opportunity and do make a mention. There are so many. In, uh, there's so much input in the chatterbox that I want to be able to get to that and and be able to share that. I do want to specifically share that. Uh, my sister Sisset said, "Awesome, Pastor Kevin. Oh. Love the breakdown. Yep. Manly manners. Great wow. roadmap for us all. Wow. Just thank FYI. You. Thank you. Thank you. Pastor thank you Kevin. very much. Pre- thank appreciate you. you. Pre- appreciate you. <laughs> Good job, Suzette. <laughs> Good we job, Suzette. Yes. <laughs> okay, family. You know, um, every we're gonna get into this discussion because it's really important. This part two, time to heal. Last week was very powerful." But before we do that, we want to give a reminder as to why we do this. We do this, fam. We talk about Jeremiah twenty nine thirteen every week, every week, fam. And it, it, Jeremiah twenty nine thirteen simply says, "You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart, fam." Carmen and I, Grown Folks Radio, everyday talk. We invite you to look for God, to seek God with everything you have in everything you do. It will change your perspective. It will change the way you move. It will change the way you speak. Your mindset. It will change your mindset. Your heart. Your soul. You will become a different person, fam. Carmen and I and Dan, we personally invite you to seek him. And when you find him, Watch the change in your life. We hope that it changes your perspective and it allows you to receive the message the way you're supposed to receive it. Let's get ready. Put your seatbelts on. Let's get to work. Let's get to work. Hey, last week we spoke on the type of healing that we want to focus on during this time where we're speaking on time to heal is the matter of the heart. And last week, there were specific questions that were asked and we shared based on our experience and based on our hearts and the the vulnerability and the transparency of the questions that were asked. And as the conversation continued, it was relevant that there are experiences in life that causes us pain and leaves scars in us. And we want to discuss these types of issues that cause pain and require healing. One of the questions that I put out there into 
the chatterbox was to be able to share an experience in which you had to overcome and be able to heal and there's so many different input uh, out there in the chatterbox and we want to remind that every person's healing is different you're going to meet people that have overcome and are probably a little bit further ahead from probably the space you're in right now or people who are in the same space but ultimately the idea is to be able to help one another encourage one another to be able to move on from that space in which we have been hurt and a lot of times what we don't realize during the time of healing or we think we've already healed we also enter into that space that we have residue mm -hmm. and those things don't stand out until something familiar comes in place and for me one of the key points that happened last week uh, there, there was so many um but what stood out to me when we were preparing for this show was when Kevin actually shared that a, a large of the majority of men um, are not taught to be comfortable with emotions. Right. And instead, when things become uncomfortable, they shut things down. Mm -hmm. And so that's their way of coping and their mechanism to be able to get through the hurt. So it, I think that's true of many people. It, it's not just men. There's also women who do the same thing. We carry up this wall and there's very little space for anybody to get super close to us or at least in that space where they can hurt us again mm -hmm. right and so we we want to provide that re remembrance that this is a journey that requires to be patient and gentle with yourself it takes time to heal the pain may have come, it may have been abrupt, it may have been all of a sudden, maybe you saw it coming, uh, whichever way it was, but it takes time to heal and it is a process. And the importance of healing is to give us the opportunity to fit the pieces back together, right? So we can become stronger, where we can redefine our lives, maybe ourselves, uh, we can become a voice for those who are going through the same journey. We can face our fears. We can allow God to cleanse our hearts and we can freely love. And to love, we're not just talking about love others. We're talking about loving ourselves as well, because we had that series already on self-love. Yeah. And so all of this <clears throat> is tied together. And so are you guys ready? Yeah, I, I just I want to put in, you know, this real quick. You know, I, I've I've been through a lot. Um, there's a lot of people in the world that have been through some things. But one of the things that kind of worked for me, and this is just a nugget I'm dropping out to the fam. You know, if you take a hot second, just uh, reflect on why God is allowing you to go through that storm. Right. Because he's not going to. uh put you in a storm where it's going to break you he's putting you in a storm to to help you become better he's putting you in a storm to take the your experience and be able to drop that nugget to the person that's going that's next to you that's going through the same storm yes. so if you take just a couple of minutes to just reflect on the storm that you're going through how you're handling it what to do what not to do and use that information to help the next person get out the storm help that let that be a mindset an option of a mindset when you're going through the storm and let's let's see how that helps that's really good um you yeah, have something then or yeah you, you need to jump it's like, i jump in just jump uh, in i yeah. mean as far as that goes you know uh, as far as displaying it to you yourself yes so i mean we're gonna get into the other topics but for me uh i didn't know why i was getting put through this journey Mm -hmm. you know, through that process. Right. So, I mean, I still don't know all of it, but I know that what I had wasn't really what I needed. Right. 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 So, mm -hmm. And now I'm finding out what I do need. And look, when, when, when we jump in this, this, this material, this text is going to speak to you because it spoke to Carmen and I, Yes. it's mm -hmm. going to speak to you, fam. That you're gonna be able to relate. You're gonna you're gonna have an aha moment. Is what something that Carmen and I <laughs> say all the time. You're gonna have that aha moment because the text, the scripture doesn't lie. The text forces you to look at yourself, mm -hmm. right? It forces you to look at yourself, whether you don't you know want to or not. 
you're going to. <laughs> and then, then it's up to you, fam, that if you truly want to become better, truly want to follow Christ, you'll make the changes. Yes. And so we, before we continue, we want to make sure and let you guys know, um, we do a lot of research when we come to this table and this was no different. We did it through, uh, Gavin and Dirch law and mediation psychology today, health line, trust me. And we want to acknowledge Miss Mary, Miss Mary Grievous. Uh, she's, um, a therapist that we consult uh, when we're talking about topics um fam if you in the mix of you uh finding out about yourself and you find that there is areas of uh of your life that you want to continue to get get help on that is bigger than sitting at the table talking among family we ask that you reach out to us we'll get you that contact information yes. to help you get the help that you need to 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 be better OK, so, um, you know, we'll have the everybody you can find us on Grown Folks Radio uh, worldwide on, on Facebook, Instagram, all over the place. I am us. We'll get you the information. Send us an email. OK. All right. We're also available. So it, our phone number is on the Web page and our Facebook. You are free to call us. Uh, we're here for you. We want to share the input that's on the chatterbox. We, uh, Suzanne said Stop. yes to my shirt because it says fearlessly resilient. But she did say that that is her first book and God took her from a low place after divorce, anxiety, and fear along the journey of healing. But God, no matter the challenges, God made us resilient. Amen. 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 And Amen. Nush. Uh, said she, I went through it with strength, positivity, and reminding myself there were worse days than this. So this may be is an omen for taking action towards better days. Yes. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> Nichelle said overcoming hurt has been a journey and process. I found that when I finally got to the point of forgiving myself, key point, great point. And getting out of my emotions, then I was able to allow God to heal me and renew my strength. Yeah, I can't wait to talk about that because that is a humongous area uh, of opportunity for us, fam, because you got to get out your own way. Mm -hmm. You know, you get locked into your own emotions and everything else shuts down. So, <laughs> yes, Alex said that is all surprising to me and my new judgment and journey. Uh, Nush said, ask help from your loved ones. You're not alone. Let people help. Absolutely. Uh, she also said, don't be hard on ourselves. Forgive and keep it positive. D is in the house. So we want to say hello, family, to him. Um, Alex also share, I'm around ones whom I have to encourage, which helps me think about who I really am. Um, and it's, and it continues, family. So we want to provide that as an opportunity to be able to to share right uh so said is telling me michelle had you know she had great feedback about overcoming hurt and that was amazing um this is what is about family we support each other we encourage each other through the journey that we're going through and and this is a time to be able to do that and so we want to jump in into the stages of healing mm -hmm. so in our research what we found was that there was five stages of healing. Yeah. Um, the first stage, fam, um, just to give you guys a quick uh, synopsis or, you know, just so you know where we're going. Uh, stage one is grief and denial. Stage two is anger. Stage three is bargaining. Stage four, family, is depression. And stage five is acceptance. Okay. Yes. You know, you know, the, and the first lady will will dive in a little bit more. But the stages are not necessarily in this order for everyone. Someone may jump straight into bargaining, for example, and then into anger, while another may last months in one stage and skip others entirely. What we just want our message here tonight, fam, is to let you know that it's a process. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. That's the that's the nugget here, fam. It's a process. It's not going to happen over overnight. Um, the first lady mentioned to be patient, to be gentle. But another word that we forgot to mention is be consistent. Yes. You have to be consistent. You know, don't be doing things out of spite, you know, just because you're having a bad day. When you're having a bad day, that's when you need to be talking with the Lord. Absolutely. That's when you need to be in prayer. 
Yes, absolutely. Yes. Great point. And we want to mention, right, loss is different for everybody. And it could be a loss of a loved one. It could be a loss of a job. It could be a loss of, you know, a breakup, a divorce. It could be a terminal illness. We don't know what that type of loss the person's going through. I, But obviously what it is during a loss is that the familiar thing you knew is no longer there. And now you're faced in an uncomfortable place a place of anxiety, a place of fear, and it brings you to those emotions that rage up inside you and you go through these stages. Mm -hmm. And so we want to dive into that. We want to get into stage one, which we're talking about the grief and denial. And grief, of course, as we know it, is an overwhelming emotion that happens during a time of loss. And uh, before accepting your grief, you probably go through the denial of the loss by thoughts such as this is not happening. (laughs) You know, this is absolutely not happening to me, you know, and it's a very normal human defense against painful human emotions that are difficult to accept. And I want to repeat that it's very human, very normal to have a defense mechanism against any painful human emotions you want to put that out there yes yes it's 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 (laughs) human yeah you know yeah i mean because you know you you, it's it's everything that we're talking about here fam we've all experienced it Mm -hmm. and so we know that it's facts you know it's you it's it's okay it's okay to to feel that way i think is is the is the point to highlight here and and don't be ashamed of that yeah once again it's part of the process Right. And, you know, denial gives more time to slowly observe the news and begin to process it. So when you go into the grief, the emotion, the overwhelming emotion, you're kind of going to the shock place. And then you go into the denial phase where you're kind of like, this can't be or can it be? Is this a nightmare? Are things going to return to normal? What's happening? Because it, it really, truly depends on the loss. And... Um, you go through those type of stages and you it, the denial process what it does it helps you numb right those type of emotions and help you reduce the intensity of the situation right so it numbs you and makes you like okay this is not happening forget it you know and and it's and it's hard because you know there's so so many times in the news when you hear people that are being killed or or you know crashes or anything like that or you yourself have gone through a divorce or a breakup or you know you have a loved one who's diagnosed with with illness it's difficult those situations are difficult to accept at that point but as you move into those denial stages the emotions you've been hiding they begin to rise up and then you're found in a different stage now that numbing has gone down the reality is kind of slowly coming up and you're no longer able to deny it and the emotions begin to rise up mm-hmm. yep. right the and true emotion the true emotion the true emotion <laughs> absolutely And so what we want to do, since loss is different for everyone, we want to kind of give an example as to what that type of grief or denial looks like in four different areas. So, for instance, in breakup and divorce, right, we can say things such as they're just upset. They will get they'll be over this tomorrow. Right. Yeah. They'll they'll wake up. (laughs) They'll they'll wake up and come to their senses. I've said that. Yeah. Right. I'll get them back. (laughs) Right. In a breakup. This will blow over we'll be fine we'll be back to the same place Mm -hmm. right if you go through a job loss you know you might be like okay their mistake you know they're gonna call me back tomorrow they're gonna miss me can nobody do what i do (laughs) right right yeah yeah if you have a death of a loved one right you can be she's not gone she'll come right around the corner pretty soon and that's a little bit uh more difficult because it's physically the physical is gone Mm -hmm. right You go through a terminal illness or diagnosis. This isn't happening to me. The diagnosis is wrong. They're wrong. This is this is not right. Yeah, I need to get a second opinion. I don't believe yours or a third opinion. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, it it might be that case. 
but everybody's loss is different and everybody's emotions and and grievance is different and everybody's denial periods are different Mm -hmm. and it's truly dependent and some people don't go straight to that stage they go to another stage i went straight to anger yeah. And that's Straight. actually the second <laughs> yeah. stage. But you know, uh, I can I I think it's a safe assumption that a lot of men that's where we go. Yes. You know what I mean? Because we don't know about the or if the the grief and denial is very short. You know what I mean? Because we can quickly identify with being mad. Because right. it as a man, it's okay to be mad. So, um let let's just go ahead and jump right into that emotion and and deal with it. You know, and be that wrecking ball that we we kind of have come to to be you know what's funny is that they say that denial is considered as a coping mechanism and anger is a masking effect facts yeah if you sit back and look at it that's facts right because you're you're mad and you don't care about anything else you know and you you're you're just going to destroy or harm or whatever you want to do or push off push off to to not deal with whatever is going on right because absolutely anger is you know you hide the emotions and you carry the pain through that anger and you kind of uh pour out in that anger everything you're feeling but everything that you're showing everybody is out of rage right Mm -hmm. and so and it's it could be redirected at, at other people so it's not like it's just like for instance if it's a breakup or a divorce it's not just at that person it could be redirected at other people, especially if you have close people. You you could be really quick to be angry with them because you automatically assume they're going to stick with you regardless. Right. Or a breakup, whether it's a guy or girl. If it's a guy and a girl broke up with him, he's mad at a girl. Now he's mad at every girl. <laughs> yes. Right. He's yep. mad at every girl because every girl is going to act and do what she did. And vice versa. So, um, but you gotta you gotta slow that down. Yep. Because you know you can miss your blessing that quick. You can miss your blessing that quick. You know, um, as the anger subsides, uh, you begin to think more rationally about what's happening, and you feel the emotions that you've been pushing aside, right? And you kind of go and you walk through it, and you get into a certain place. But before we get into that, we're talking about all this anger that we get and we go through this hurt. And a lot of it is that masking ability and that masking effect. But we're also masking that it harbors bitterness and resentment and it masks the fact that we're afraid. Mm -hmm. Afraid to actually direct it or confront it is what I meant. Afraid of what we're going to face on our own. Yeah. The uh, unknown, the unknown. fear of yeah. the unknown, of not knowing which way we're going to head. If you've had a full relationship in place or a full marriage in place, whatever has happened in that marriage or that relationship, you are now. Even it could have been healthy, it could have been unhealthy, but it was what you knew, right? And mm-hmm. you comfortable were comfortable with. in right. that place of what you knew. Mm-hmm. So now that it's no longer there then what right and not everyone is necessarily equipped to the point of saying all right you're lost let's move on you know not everybody does that and even then when you say all right you're lost let's move on you're probably you're still there harboring some resentment and rejection and abandonment that you just mask with oh well you know it's it's uh next you know like my family says Mahalante vive gente, which means more people live further up. So, <laughs> nice. But <laughs> the truth of the matter is, is that we become angry and we become fearful, we become resentful, and there's a lot that becomes rooted during that process. Mm-hmm. And we kind of want to harbor a little bit into this conversation of anger because the part that we are missing is that we also get angry at God. Yes. Mm-hmm. I definitely did this. Yeah. Um, obviously, with everything that I went through, you know, um, I, I stayed in anger a long time. And, um, I mean, I was saying and I, everything under the sun to try to make myself feel better. Obviously, it wasn't working. 
and um, you know, I, I lingered in this area as, as far as doing all that, and I, I regret it now because it didn't allow myself to fully heal and or even to even begin healing, really, because right. I was lingering in it. I was I was there. I was angry all the time. I didn't want to talk to anybody. I would hide myself in the closet. Not in the really, closet? Not really in the closet, but... He's a Patriot fan. It's expected. <laughs> Stop oh it. Oh, my God. <laughs> all right, let's get into the conversation, guys. I think the, I think the worst part about containing all that anger and walking around with it is that... And, and holding on to it with no healing, like, you're hurting the people around you. Yes. They're not mm-hmm. getting the best of you. And you don't even realize how harsh you can be at times or things you say... It, because you're so caught up in your own head and what you have going on. It's almost mm-hmm. like your own little bubble of just hatred and anger. Um, and it's just rubbing off on everyone. Yeah, people, people see some, it. Yeah, and some they people don't, don't even want nothing. They're like, oh, he's in a mood. I don't <laughs> right. want to be around him. Right. Man, it's, it's, it's really, really sad and detrimental to your health as well. I mean, yeah. you're not doing any justice. You know, not helping. We, you know we're, we're mad at, you know, I can I can relate. Mm-hmm. You know, you're being mad at God because how dare for him to allow me to go through this or to allow this to happen to me. Mm-hmm. But if you sit back and look, fam, he probably showed you it was time to go a long, long time, time prior to what it is right now. And it probably got to this point because you didn't listen. Mm-hmm. Right. And he's got better for you. You got to know that he's got better for you, but you got to be in a mindset to be able to hear him. You got to be in the mindset to be able to to see him and he'll tell you which way to go. But we can't get caught up in our emotions. That's the default, because that's what we know. Right. That's that's what we know. We get caught up in our emotions. We mad at the world. We mad at God, you know. But when he loves you enough to pull you out of it, it becomes uncomfortable. And then our default is we're mad at him because he loved us enough to remove us. (laughs) Out of that hostile environment. Yep. That's the mindset that you have to have. You, He loved you enough to pull you out, to detach you from that foolishness. Heal. Endure the process and become better so he can bless you the way he wants to bless you. Amen. 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 I think that that's very sound advice. I also think about those situations where it's not just about a relationship. What about if you're a child and going through a loss? Um, what if you are a you lose a loved one and those situations and maybe you're someone who's always been serving at church or someone who's always been doing right or you know been in the word and all of a sudden you experience such a deep emotional loss right mm-hmm. and you become angry towards not necessarily you're not necessarily pointing it towards god or you're thinking you're not but you are are. because you're not understanding how what you've done for the lord actually came back and kind of quote unquote bit you and i'm not saying that that's a place that we need to be at i'm saying that that's a place that people have been at and so i want to take a moment to to understand those places as well because um i think sometimes when we become angry or we see someone who's angry we lose the compassion and we don't want to deal like Mm -hmm. nat just said you know he's in a funk or she's in a funk i don't want to you know you don't want to deal with that um but we lose that compassionate side that side of showing someone love and showing them compassion and friendliness and and sometimes that very action actually helps someone kind of lower their walls a little bit and kind of allow for that vulnerability to occur and it may not necessarily happen right away but i i think sometimes that when we're looking on the outside looking in right and when we're in the inside we can't see what everybody sees Mm -hmm. right but we're, we're on the outside looking in. I think sometimes we can tend to lose the compassion for someone. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's super unattractive. I mean, like Nat was saying, you know, you're, you don't want to deal with that, you know. Um, but that's, 
the exact time that you need to be engaged. Yeah. That's the exact time that you can can help somebody change. You know, and 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 be compassionate, love them enough to to let them know it's going to be all right. That's all. That's all you need to do, guys. A, a simple it's going to be okay as you know, for a man it's a handshake or a hug. For the ladies it's a hug. You know, it's just letting them know that number one, you're not the only one who's going through it. And number two, there there is some level of support. Right. You're not alone. I, I think about, you know, how quick we kind of jump into action when we're talking about people who have losses such as a uh, hurricane or earthquakes or we're ready to help out the homeless and we're ready to um, do these uh, servant actions towards others. Mm-hmm. But when it has to do with the spiritual, when it has to do with the heart, where we kind of hesitate. Because when we see the anger, or we see um, someone can be spiritually homeless. They, mm-hmm. they, they don't have a place mm-hmm. where they feel they belong. We tend to want to push away from that. And I, I kind of, you know, I, I think that in the research and, and thinking about, you know, what is it that when we read the Bible and we see the stories of, of the actions that were that others took upon each other and when we read about what Jesus did and we, we what is it that he really mm-hmm. taught out there right mm-hmm. that you're valuable it, it doesn't matter who you are you're valuable to me enough to come down here and become being a human being to experience this to then provide a bridge for you to have a relationship with God and have an eternal passage where you can be with him forever. But would, we're quick to kind of push that. And, and I put me in there, you know, we're quick to sometimes kind of push that and, and kind of put up that wall and say, and mind you, I'm not talking about quick in just this sense. I'm talking about there is and I recognize that there is a place of a healthy boundary. You have to have a healthy boundary because he did that too. Jesus mm-hmm. did that too, right? <laughs> he said, you got a choice here. Um, but there was a lot of love shown yeah. before all of that. So I, I just want to put that out there because I, I, as we support one another, as we encourage one another, as we motivate one another, and as we're there for one another, Let's look from the inside out and also look from the outside in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's really and what, good. where can we be the difference for people? Uh, not only for ourselves, but be the difference for others. Mm-hmm. Amen. Yeah. Alex got some good, uh, good material here. Look at him. Uh, we all have to realize we are in an imperfect world. Uh, Satan has, has a power, has powered us to think negative. Instead of being positive, no matter what and no matter what and thank our creator to move straight ahead and not fall back. Um, our understanding of our faith keeps us spiritually going strong. Okay, it's, Yeah, because it, it didn't come up for me. Sorry. <laughs> Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> technology. technology. Oh, man. Alex, thank you for that, because that is really powerful to be able to say that. Uh, you know, when we see our family growing in every aspect, and we're not talking about numbers, uh, grown folks, family is not about that. Uh, we love it. Don't get me wrong. We love it. But when we see the spiritual growth in people, and mm-hmm. we see it in Alex, we see it in Nat, we see it in Nat, Nat we see it in ourselves. Uh, but when we see that we have been able to help one another and plant the seed and water it, mm-hmm. and then just, just be able to see it blossom is absolutely amazing. So thank you, Alex, for sharing that. Yes. Well, Dan. Yes, sir. What are you getting from this so far? I'm getting a lot. Yeah. To be honest. He's quiet. You know, it's yeah, funny because he gets real quiet and he's taking notes. And it's like he's in, 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 in school. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm taking a lot in because I'm, I'm going through a lot of this thing, these things. Okay. I mean, I've on, I've stayed in anger for what 
like a year and a half, mm-hmm. I'd say. Um, and then, you know, I went through the depression. I went through everything. I went through all these feelings. And I'm I'm still kind of going through a few of them. But I, I'm, I'm really proud of where I'm becoming Good. and where I'm Amen. going. And up. it's because of you guys and no, being on the show. Don't cry, Carmen. Yeah, no. yeah. Don't, don't cry. Do that. Don't I know do that. how you get. I'm already tear-eyed, too. So. Don't do that. <laughs> I was a little taken back, too, with this show. I think it's very powerful. I think just with the forgiveness and anger and just healing, there's just so much that one person can go through. Right. You know? Um, Carmen, you're like, when I hear your, when you tell me your testimony, I, I get blown away because I'm like, geez, like, and I think I have, you know, I've been through it all. And I, you know, it's just <clears throat> every individual has a different story. And I think with every waking day, and this is something I share with like each of my family members, I'm like, no matter what you've been through, every waking day is an opportunity to conquer the world, to be who you're destined to be, to be the best version of yourself. Right. So, you know, on those days where I do my sports show on Thursdays and I'm all somber Sally and I'm tired, <laughs> that's one version of me. But then Wednesday, you know, you might get a different version of me. Every every day <laughs> I just, I try my best to push and push and get through some of those same things that, you know, you guys have been through um and anger is definitely one i was angry with a lot of things and a lot of people for the circumstances of my life and where i am and one day i just threw in the white flag and i was like i forgive you all and i forgive myself and i just want to dive deeper in the word and find a deeper understanding of why i'm really here and what i'm supposed to be doing because it wasn't a it wasn't about them. I was mad at for the wrong reasons, you know? It's like I wanted to blame someone instead of just doing something about it. Right. So that's my thing with every waking day. It's like, man, every day you have opportunity. Go live your best life and make mm-hmm. it what you want, especially if you have people who look up to you. And that's my big thing. If they're looking at you every day, waiting for that smile, waiting for that joke, or looking at you for some kind of like positivity... You got to be ready to go, man. So all that that negative energy and the anger, it doesn't fit in your life anymore. But you know what? That a lot of that, too, is uh, your mindset. A lot of that is your mindset. And if you wake up, you know, in the morning and that's your mindset throughout the day, it starts and, you know, Mm -hmm. maintains it. That's a mindset change. You, you know, you, you getting another day of breath is, is a blessing, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? It is up to you to make the most of it. Yeah. And, and, you know, so many times when we're going through a storm or we're not having a great day, we're really concentrating on our focus is on whatever the storm is. Yeah. When in yeah. all honesty, it shouldn't be that. You know what I mean? Yeah. You should be happy, smiling, you know, giving thanks to God because you don't know what this this the blessing that's coming out of the storm you don't know that because you're so focused on the storm itself you don't know the connection that you can get from that storm you don't know the you know the the trade or the person or or the uh the blessing i'm gonna use that again that that could come out of that storm that you have no idea is sitting there waiting for you but he's got to take you through that for it to come out for you to be able to see it the way you need to see it so yeah agree well said, Kevin. Check out Pastor Kevin. I know. Oh, Doing yeah. there thing. it is again. I didn't say it. <laughs> hey, Suzette said it. She said it. I I think that's key point, you know. And like Nat saying, everybody has a different story, a different journey, and we all go through it. And I actually thank you, Nan, uh, Dan, for sharing that because a lot of people stay stuck in anger. And that's the reason why we kind of harbor on this part of anger, because we not only get angry at the situation, at the person, at other people, we get angry at God, and we kind of stay there for a while, and then we start making decisions based on that anger, Mm -hmm. and it becomes our base and our foundation in how we act, we we react, the way we make decisions, what we're going to do, what we're not going to do, all of that takes play, and anger is actually just the pushing force for those reactions and actions and decisions that we're making. Mm -hmm. And we don't realize that sometimes we don't realize it. Oh yeah. Sometimes, sometimes just what did I do is, uh, is a reaction of that anger that, that comes from Kevin a lot. You know what (laughs) I mean? That's, that's Kevin. I mean, she'll tell you, I mean, that that's me because that's what, that's the blueprint that I have. 
right? That's the blueprint that I have to pull from, um, being defensive, you know, and when I get angry, it's like, oh my God, what did I do now? And that's not the right way to do it. Right. You know, you know, we're, we're, we're talking about healing fam. We're talking, you know, last month we talked about, you know, um, self love. This is all a process. Mm -hmm. You find out how to love yourself, you know, the, the proper way to love yourself. And if there's any hurt or pain, we're learning how to heal. Right. So this is a process. Amen. A very important process. <laughs> yeah. And I think that we, we decided to go down this route in time to heal because we were, t we were speaking about love, but we got to get rid of all this root that we have inside. Yeah. And a lot of that root comes from so many experiences and journeys that we've gone that go all the way back to childhood. And we have to get a, a clear understanding of what that is. And we have to know how we're operating. If you are operating in a great heart with a great spirit and you're running on the fruit of the spirit and you're doing all these great things, amen, we applaud you. We want to know about that too because that gives encouragement to others. And there's those of us that still may need, you know, that, that opportunity to, to take out that little root that's still there you know, or it's a lot, um, or there's weeds now growing through them. It, it's a different process for everybody. And we need to be able to understand what's truly within us. Because as we were talking about last week, the Bible doesn't talk about healing in a, in the spiritual, right? The inner healing, it talks about the physical, but it does talk about the matters of the heart. Mm -hmm. And so out of your heart is where your, the overflow that you speak right out of the abundance of your heart is where you speak. So we have to make sure that our heart is well and it's healed and that we're cured. And you know, all those little areas that may still have a little broken piece. We are able to kind of put it back together and nothing, 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 absolutely nothing does it better than knowing who we are in Christ, who he is, what type of strength he gives us. And, what type of power we have that we're able to utilize it and what type of strength we have that can back us up. We got to get to that place past the anger mm -hmm. to be able to understand that. And so that's the reason why we hold on to that. I do want to share what Alex is saying. You all have helped me. I cannot cry on this show today, please. <laughs> you all have helped me we're trying. <laughs> through my everyday <laughs> struggles. Always stay strong, no matter what. And uh, be happy you opened your eyes and give the faith. And um, look again in the mirror at yourself. And Sergio saying, yes, Kevin, very important process to overcome. Hi, Sergio. Uh, these are all great input. I, I don't, there's so much more we have to dive into and be able to talk about it. There's three other stages we have to talk about. <laughs> we haven't gotten into those. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll probably get into three, four, five hour shows. We're not doing that, but we got three, <laughs> three stages we still got to go through. But we want to talk a little bit on this anger. We'll probably come back to that mm -hmm. and be able to talk of it. But we want to let you know, family, and, and you guys chime in and, and let them know. Um, we want this place to be a place of transparency, a, a, a place of vulnerability, a place of uncomfortable, mm -hmm. because there is no growth and comfort. And we need to get past that point. We need to uproot. We need to clear up. And we need to be able to hit those spots that we thought were clear or those spots where we know are not. And kind of refresh those spots that are and remind ourselves of who we are, that we're overcomers. We're more than a conqueror. There is a God that loves me, a Christ that died for me, and that we can just do this together. First Thessalonians 5 always tells us to build and encourage one another. And that's what we are here to do. Amen. We are the body of Christ and as a body, the physical body, the joints, the, the, the muscles, the tendons, everything needs one another in order to operate as one body. We need each other to be able to operate as one. Yeah. Amen. Fam, we, we're going to really hammer this in. Please share the show, fam. Let this show be 
the the talk about it in the office tomorrow. Somebody you know needs to to hear this, right? Be that beacon of light. Invite them to the show. Let God work through all of us to get that message across to them, to help them. They may be going through stuff, fam, that you have no idea. But a simple conversation can be an invitation for them to come join us at the show. Come mm-hmm. sit down at the table. Like the first lady said, this is judgment free, guys. We're, there's there's no judgment here. We're here to talk about each other and empowering each other to be better. Carmen and I and Dan, you know, you see it firsthand the things that we go through. You know, we we reflect back. We're very transparent. Very right. transparent. But you can also see the growth. We can see the growth in each other and we need to celebrate that. We need to celebrate that as little of a growth you may have. You still need to celebrate it. Right. Remember that we talked about that in a couple of shows ago. Yes. Celebrate your, your small, small victories. Yep. Celebrate your small victories. The big one is coming, fam. Yes. Yeah. Guys, guys, you know yes. what time it is. This is my fav- favorite segment of the show, fam. This is where the first lady breaks down the show. Ties it all back together again with the word of God. It is the most beautiful thing you will hear on the radio today, fam. Let me introduce you to Carmen's final thought. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, family. Thank you for all your input, for everything you have shared with us, for sharing your heart for letting us know what type of journey you're in, where, what stages you have overcome to be able to encourage and empower one another. Thank you for everyone in studio for sharing your thoughts and your input. This is such an important topic because in order to be fully free, to walk fully in our purpose, in our calling, we need to be free of everything that can possibly hold us back any type of anger, any type of denial, any type of numbing and bitterness, resentment, any type of fear are the things we need to be able to let go in order to walk fully in purpose, in order to understand who is Christ in us and who he made us to be, who God has made us to be, to understand fully the purpose that he has created us to, to walk in our calling, to exercise our gifts, to be able to speak in confidence of who he is to understand his love to be able to accept it to be able to give it to be able to accept the loves that others want to give to us because they truly love us without us having a side eyed or wondering or doubting or holding back because we have gone through this hurt and this pain and we're still harboring an anger and a resentment and a bitterness in order to get past that we need to speak on these topics and be able to be transparent and vulnerable with one another vulnerable with ourselves and be able to understand who we are what journey we have gone through the experiences be able to forgive others but more importantly be able to forgive ourselves because sometimes we make certain decisions that kind of put us in a place where we don't need to be because sometimes we decide the anger is a little bit more comfortable than being free because sometimes we want to blame others and we want to hold on to that instead of letting go and allowing the healing to happen because sometimes sometimes just being comfortable is a safe place and being uncomfortable doesn't feel good but it's in the uncomfortable moment that we get to grow it's an uncomfortable moment that takes us to a different place where we become resilient where we become and we persevere where we can overcome where we can conquer when we have that space where we need to push and fight in order for us to be able to move forward It is in that uncomfortable place that we do so. It's in that space that we get to grow. So uncomfortable doesn't necessarily feel good, but it's the best thing you can go through. I want to share with this with you on Ecclesiastes 319. For everything there is a season, 
a time for every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to harvest, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to cry and a time to laugh, a time to grieve and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to turn away, a time to search and a time to quit searching, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear, and a time to mend, a time to be quiet, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. What do people really get for all their hard work? You get to answer that. For all your hard work, what do you do? You can put all your hard work into the anger, into the resentment, into the bitterness, into the fear, and you can live there, or you can put your, all your hard work in being uncomfortable and being free, walking in purpose, and walking in your calling. Hey, family, you know how we always do. We celebrate the one and only, the reason for our journey, and we celebrate him today with our Indie Artist of the Month, Kenny Tomlin, with Get Your Giving On, But before we do, we want to leave you with these thoughts. Family, remember, change is a process. Growth is a process. Trust the process. Remember, God loves you. Be a blessing today to make an impact tomorrow. Grown Folks Radio, as always, thank you for being with us in this journey. And thank you for sharing yours. Family, thank you for joining us. We love you. Share the love, fam. Reach out to Carmen and I. Um, If you want to, uh, if you feel like you need some more help um, in the areas that we're talking about, please reach out to us. Let us connect you uh, with the people that we were working with uh, to help you get that uh, that help that you need. All right. We're all family and we want everybody to to be better. Yes, and we're also here for you. Right. Together, we are better. Apply knowledge is power, fam. Right? Apply knowledge. Or a weapon, like as the first lady said last week. (laughs) Uh, Hey, guys, make sure you join us next week uh, as we dive in. We continue to uh, dive in to the the healing. All right? A time to heal. Time to heal. heal. We love you guys. See you guys next week. Be safe. Good night. Good night. (laughs) Good night, guys. ways some people be acting like they ain't never done nothing wrong sometimes you gotta say how you doing god bless you and just keep moving on oh that's not being rude oh no that's just being smart there's too many people out here with nothing but evil in their hearts so use your precious time to help somebody in need because most of these people with money y'all just stingy as they can be the truth is so many people are hurt people are hurting you reach in that wallet that wallet that purse and get your and get your giving on show somebody how much you care get your giving on give up some of them clothes you don't give it up get your giving on in your house eating right in front of you looking like y'all better figure it out don't even want to help the elderly or nobody else all they ever think about is their selfish on the self that's right so let us all come together and help who we can all we're asking you to do is lend a helping hand so that we can take this journey Spreading love across the land The world would be a better place If we all just take a stand oh, So reach down deep in your soul Reach down in your soul And let all that selfishness go And get your giving And get your giving on Give it up, give it up, give it up.
that you care. Get your giving on. Start giving on them people right there. Get your giving on. Get giving on everywhere. You know you got plenty. Way down Don't be so scared. And get your giving on. You know you got more than you need. Get your giving on. Don't nobody else succeed. Get your giving on. Give it up, give it up, give it up, give it up.